The results for the November 2020 ITC were released recently. The pass rate hasn't exactly been fantastic. I think the pass rate is about 22%, which is very low for, for, for ITC. So I've got a lot of students emailing me, uh, messaging me, asking me what's going on, how do, we, you know, how do we deal with this? And obviously I've got a lot of students who are preparing for the next ITC, which is obviously in April, um, or have just gotten results that they're going to need to write ITC again. And the question obviously is, what am I supposed to be focusing on? What am I supposed to be doing? If what I've done isn't working, what else do I need to do? Do I need to change what I'm doing? Uh, you know, what do I need to do to make sure that I pass this thing? Either, you know, even if it's the first time that you're writing it, like what do I need to do to pass the thing? Because obviously a bad pass rate in November makes you feel... <laughs> you know, more, more freaked out and more uncomfortable about uh, what the pass rate's going to be for you and how this is going to affect you. So I thought the fastest way for, for me to help you is to, um, is to discuss this with you. So I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to show you uh, what Psyche says is the problem as far as ITC is concerned. And obviously, since the results have only just been released for November, uh, I'm going to use the January 2020 uh exam the ITC exam and comments to to do that and you know so I'm going to go through that and two I'm going to show you um, the ITC course that that we've developed and how we've developed it why and how it aligns to what Psyche says is wrong or Psyche says you're struggling with um, and why we've designed it that way and why it's designed to help you do that um, so that you can understand what you need to be working on. So whether or not you, you know, whether or not you're interested in registering for, you know, for, 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 for our course or not, um, you know, that that's fine. But the point is, these are the types of things that you should be focusing on. So whether you do them on your own or you do them with us, that's great. Um, but these are the things that you need to be focusing on. So twofold. One, what does Psyche say is going wrong with, you know, with students? And two, how have we designed our course um, and what have we put in there that represent the types of things that you should be working on, whether you work on them with us or not? So let's let's start with the first thing. The first thing I want to say um, is that Psyche creates uh, a report every year, every ITC, uh, giving an indication of their comments, the markers comments on the ITC. So again, as I say, I'm using this from January because that's that's the one that we have. And obviously I know, you know, COVID had a big part to play in this, the mess, the chaos, that I understand that and, and you know that's it's heartbreaking, but it is a reality that we have to deal with. So obviously January doesn't take into account the impact of COVID, but this is this is an indication of the stuff that generally goes wrong. So we need we need to deal with it. Okay, so this is a link that you'll find on Psyche's website, and I'll put the link in the video um, in the video description so that you can find it for yourself. The reason I'm doing this is because uh, you know every lecturer you speak to, everyone you speak to has got different opinions, and in your mind you've got your own opinion of what it is that you're struggling with. Um, but now we're going to go straight to the source, right? We're going to go straight to Psyche, who sets the exam, who marks the exam. And let's see what they say students generally get wrong, okay? So, so on about page 10, uh, number four, they start with general comments, okay? And here's something that I want you to, to, to see. So what they've done here in section four, uh, from, from a review of candidates' answers to the required sections of the January ITC, the general deficiencies set out below were identified. These problems affect the overall performance of candidates. Okay, so I want to be really clear that what they're doing here is saying, guys, this is the stuff that you're getting wrong. Okay, and it's so important because we make this mistake all the time. Notice, it is a matter of concern that candidates make the same mistakes year after year. Although these aspects seem like common sense, candidates oops, seem like common sense. Candidates who pay attention to them are likely to obtain better marks and it may even turn a low mark into a pass. Okay? It is so important that I emphasize this for you because as we go through it, I'm going to keep on talking about what you're focusing on. 
And what all my students are going, oh, but Yvonne, this is what I need to do, and this is what I'm doing, and this is what I'm doing. And Psyche is going, can you please do that? And all my students are going, no, Yvonne, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this. Okay, and this is what we're going to talk about. And I'm like, I'm very passionate about this, and I'm very intense about it, because I keep saying, and Psyche keeps saying, you make the same mistake year after year after year okay so what psyche is saying forget about me we don't trust me we don't trust our lecturers that's great that's cool whatever okay but this is what psyche is saying the people who are marking and setting the exam that you're going to write guys if you sort the stuff out if you focus on the stuff you can even turn a low mark into a pass okay so let's get this absolutely straight this is not Yvonne's opinion of what's going on here. This is Psyche's opinion. So let's see what they're saying your problem is. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go through the headings so that we can get an overall idea. 4.1. What's the first thing? Application of knowledge. Okay? Application of knowledge. Not the knowledge itself, but what you do with the knowledge. What can you do? with your knowledge. Not, what do I know? What's all the technical stuff I know? What can I do with my knowledge? Okay, Workings. It's essential that candidates show their workings. But clearly, you're not showing your workings. So you can't get partial marks for stuff because we can only mark what you're showing. You're not showing your workings. Okay, That's something you have to practice. Number three, communication. Candidates fare better in questions requiring calculations than discussive questions, except for the fact that every year the balance is shifting and increasingly the ITC is discussion questions. I think in January it was what, like 70% of the exam was discussion-based questions, which means 70% of the stuff is not pure calculations. You've got, you cannot pass without being able to do discussion questions, okay? Journal entries. This is probably the only one that's technical related, that's like really knowledge based. A fundamental part of financial accounting is an understanding of debits and credits and a, a means of assessing whether a candidate understands fundamental principles. Like, do you know your debits and credits? Forget about like all the fancy stuff, you know, and all the like, but what would it look like? What's the debit and credit? Okay, so 4.4 journal entries. 4.5 time management. Budget time for each question, okay? We know time management is a problem. We spend too much time reading the case study. We spend too much time planning. We spend too much time trying to remember. It's taking too long to formulate, uh, you know, to formulate our points. Uh, we're spending too much time. We're spending too much time on the difficult stuff, whatever. Layout and presentations. Fascinating that this is what they're saying is getting people, uh, getting in the way of people's marks, right? Allocate time to planning the layout so that you can understand the shape of, of what you're trying to do. Irrelevancy. Displaying and giving irrelevant knowledge. So I'm just going to dump everything down that I know about this because I can't separate what's relevant for this area versus what's not relevant. Drilling down. Responses, particularly in financial management, uh, management decision-making, control strategy, risk management, governance, um, are often provided by simply repeating information given in the question. That students are unable to drill down to assess underlying problems. So we're unable to go into the level of detail necessary in order to do this particular answer. Like we kind of, we know what the theory is and we know, uh, you know, what kind of, or what area of theory we're supposed to be using, but we, don't, we can't actually really apply, can't use it, we can't drill down and give the level of detail, the type of analysis, the types of in-depth detail that they're looking for. Recommendations, interpretations. Responses to these requirements are generally poor, either because candidates are unable to explain principles that they can apply numerically, or because they're reluctant to commit themselves to one course of action. It's essential to make a recommendation when the question calls for it and support it with reasons. Okay, so recommend recommending stuff and interpreting stuff. Exam technique um, remains the key distinguishing feature between exam between candidates who pass and those that fail. Many candidates did not address what was required by the questions. For example, provided a discussion where calculations were required or presented financial statements where discussion was required. Open book exams. 
Candidates must familiarize themselves with the open book policy and be aware that it may differ from the accredited university. This is not, I don't think this is a massive thing. I think most people are aware of what they are and are allowed to do. Um, the, obviously, you know, make sure you know that, but make sure that you know what's in those books and you can navigate around them because you've got these resources, these valuable resources on your desk and it makes sense to use them, but only if you've practiced using them in, in that way, that you actually understand how to navigate around this. So 4.11, we have um, exam technique. 12, paying attention or paying equal attention to all the competency areas. It's disappointing to note that candidates still appear to be the most prepared to respond to accounting and external report questions and fared considerably poorer in some of the other disciplines, most notably management, accounting, and finance. I mean, this is like, this is not, this is not news for us, right? Most accounting students really struggle with this and don't like this particular area. Um, but you, you're going into an integrated paper where you cannot pass on FINAC alone. Like, you cannot pass and, on FINAC and tax alone. Like, you're just not going to, you're not going to pass. Okay. Those are, and that's the end of that. Okay, so those are the 12 areas that Psyche is saying, you guys, this is what's, this is what's causing your problem, okay? This is where things are going wrong. Now, in terms of this, I want to be really clear and I want you to really sit and think about and pay attention to what they are saying and what they're not saying, okay? What they're not saying here is that candidates are lacking technical skills. That is not what they're saying. Okay? They are not saying that candidates don't know enough. Okay? And this is what 90% of my students are talking about. You know, in the run-up to ITC, in this situation, every student I speak to is saying the same thing, the same thing. Yvonne, I need more revision. I need more theory. I don't know my technical stuff. I don't know the detail. I don't know enough. I'm not doing enough revision. I've got to do more revision. I don't know my stuff well enough. I don't know my technical skills well enough. And I'm going to keep on hammering this into you because you keep doing the same thing. I've been lecturing CTA and this level of stuff and, and preparing students for ITC for over a decade. And it is the same thing every single year. Okay? So when Psyche says, this is what you're doing wrong every single year, you're not special. Okay? Because this is the problem. Every student looks and goes, mm, yes, Yvonne, I see what you're saying. I understand that. I hear what you're saying. But, 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 me, I'm different. I, I know much less than anyone around. I am especially more useless at my technical stuff than anyone else around. So I, me, I just need to quickly go and do some more revision to get up to the level that Psyche thinks that I should be at and that everyone else is at. Because while I agree with you, Yvonne, I am special. I, for whatever reason you think, I haven't, you know, I did CTA too long ago, or I am especially forgetful, or I didn't do very well, or I got just like barely scraped a 15 CTA, or my memory is terrible. I mean, there are a million excuses that I have heard over the years as to why you, specifically you, are especially special in terms of your technical knowledge and why you should be exempt from everything I'm talking about here. My answer to you, no, you're not. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you know. I don't care how long ago you did CTA. I don't care. Psyche is still saying exactly the same thing to you. Stop spending all your time revising the theory, the technical skills. You want to know what's going to make you fail? You want to know where the pass rates are dropping? It is this stuff. It is this stuff. We can't apply the knowledge that we have. You have knowledge. You do know stuff. Because when you look at the solutions, you're like, mm, yeah, 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 I kind of know. But you didn't do it. You don't know how to do it. It takes you too long to formulate points. You're not showing your workings properly, so I can't follow your thinking. I can't follow what you're doing. I can't follow the order that you're doing. You're not communicating properly, or it's taking too long to communicate stuff. Okay, All of this stuff that you don't want to work on. Why don't you want to work on it? Because they're not comfortable skills. 
Okay? And you are very big on comfort. Okay? You are very big. I want to be comfortable. Theory makes you feel smart. Okay? When you revise, you feel like you're gathering knowledge. So you feel warm and cozy and comfy. And you're like, I'm feeling smart and I'm feeling more prepared and I'm feeling good about myself. I'm feeling like I know a little bit more than I did when I started this. And I'm feeling like I'm gathering knowledge. Okay? But that is a lie. Because if you can't use that knowledge, you're wasting your time. If you can't communicate it, if you can't show your workings, if you can't apply it, if you can't separate the relevant from the irrelevant for this particular situation, if you can't manage your time, if you can't read and interpret the question properly, if you can't give recommendations, if you can't interpret this stuff, then all of your theory means nothing. Now, the problem is that when we attempt to do questions, when we put ourselves into that space of like, okay, fine, I'm going to do a question now. We get stuck very early on in the question because we're like, there's something, I'm hitting a wall and I'm not sure what to do with it. It's taking me too long and I'm not sure how to get around it. Something is missing. Now, the problem is, is that we always assume the same thing. We always assume that the problem is that I don't know enough theory. Like, if I knew my theory, Yvonne, then this wouldn't be a problem for me and this would be easier for me. So I'm going to go back to theory and I'm going to learn more so that the question is easier. But the, you don't have time for that, one. And two, that's not true. Okay? I can feel as comfortable as I like. I can recite to you inside, out, and backwards how to drive a car. Right? I mean, I could know, I could draw it out, I could know the theory, I could recite to you every step in detail, inside, out, and backwards, how to drive a car. But when I get behind the wheel of a car for the first time, it is going to be uncomfortable. And the time after that. And the time after that. Because there is a specific difference in the skill required to do the task than to know what the task is. When you're sitting and you're looking at questions, your brain is going, oh, I would do that, and maybe that, and oh, I know that. But you're not doing it. So it's not the same thing. All of your theory, you need to understand the stuff I'm not underlying, but you don't spend any time on the communication skills, on the application skills. And every time you hit a problem, you're like, oh, I don't know what's going on here. I'm struggling. And immediately, the only solution that comes to mind is if I knew my work better, this would be easier. And so therefore, that's my only solution. And I totally understand that. One of the reasons for that is that we've never been taught how to assess our communication. When you look at your own sentence, how do you know whether it's right or wrong? How do you know whether that's okay or not? Because you're only focusing on keywords. You're only focusing on the content of the sentence, not the form of the sentence or like the actual communication structure. You've never been taught how to do that. That's a severe lack in the education system, as far as I'm concerned. But there's nothing we can do about that now. But I understand that, okay? We've never been taught how to apply our knowledge. We kind of stop at this is the knowledge, and then there's like an assumption that like once you know your stuff, the rest is just going to come naturally. But it doesn't. Okay? It doesn't come naturally. And I understand that, and I know, and I really, 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 after all the thousands of students that I have dealt with over the years, at all levels, guys, and of course myself, you know, I know that. I understand the stuff that you're struggling with. And I understand the desperate, intense pull of theory because I don't know enough. I don't know my theory. Like, I don't know my stuff. If you had to ask me, like, I don't know. And you know, the problem is the closer you get to the exam, the more stupid you feel as well. You're like, I can't even remember if you're supposed to debit an asset or credit it. You know, we get like, I understand all of that. But the problem is that the only tool that we have in our toolbox at the moment is theory. And Psyche is saying there's a whole bunch of tools that these students don't have. There's 12 things that they list here, and only one of them is even close to technical based. Only one of them. I want you to understand that whatever you're working on, 
Are you focusing on your communication or are you focusing on the theory? Are you sitting down doing revision and focusing on the knowledge or are you focusing on how would I say that? How do I communicate it? How long does it take me to communicate it? Because students eventually, like they give me, you know, they'll, they'll eventually get to good answers. But I'm like, how long did that take you? Oh, well, you know, it was a half hour question. It took me three hours. Like, that's not helpful. You don't get that time in the exam. You know, if, it's, if it takes you five minutes to formulate one sentence, or like to formulate, you're in trouble. Okay? We've got to balance out the technical stuff, the problem solving with the strategy of this is what the exam looks like. This is, what, this is the problem. This is the task that you have in front of you. Okay? So I want you to be really clear, and I want you to bookmark this discussion, bookmark this video, so that when you go back to your desk and your little brain is going like... Let's go study theory. Guys, please, every single student in the past before you has done the same thing. And I can tell you, psych is trying to tell you, this is not the way to go. Okay? This is not the way to go. Now, am I trying to say to you that you need no theory whatsoever? No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay? That's not what I'm saying. However, my problem is that 90% of your study time is spent on theory and less than 10% is spent on any of these other skills, right? Where your time needs to be evenly split between your skills. So I have to absolutely emphasize not touching theory because at the moment that's all you want to do because it makes us feel good and it's simpler and you're tired and you're working and it's stressful and it's like... Well, Yvonne, at least I am studying. I'm like, I'm so exhausted during the week. And then there's the like, over the weekend, I'll do questions over the weekend because the weekend is going to be different to the week. Uh, I'm waiting for study leave, waiting for month end, waiting for year end after provisional tax is over. You know, there's all this like stuff where somehow the future is going to be different. And in the future, I will do questions. But in the meanwhile, at least I'm studying. At least I'm doing theory. Guys, please, so dangerous. I want you to keep coming back to this concept and to this comment that Saika is making. It's a matter of concern that candidates make the same mistake year after year. And although they seem like common sense, students are still not doing it. And it can turn a low mark into a pass. Okay, so I want you to bookmark this. I want you to print this out. I want you to note these 12 things. Okay, so that... You focus on the right thing. What should you be spending your time doing? How should you be spending your time focusing on this? Okay. Again, I know that I'm really intense about this stuff, and it's not my intention to harass you. It's not my intention to harangue. Blah, blah, blah. But I see this so much, and it is so heartbreaking. And I, I, I totally understand where all of it comes from, but it absolutely breaks my heart that I see so many students going down the same path every year. And I'm like, guys, you're on the wrong road. You're spending your time trying to gather more technical knowledge, and Psych is trying to say to you, can you please do questions? And can you please practice these skills? Because this isn't something that comes overnight. We all look and go, oh, yeah, I need to show my workings. Okay, yeah, yeah, got it, thanks. I will do that on the day of the exam. But if you don't practice how that looks, then you're going to miss stuff. You're going to oversummarize. You're not going to lay it out properly. And this is what they're saying you're doing. Every student knows. This is not like you don't know. This is not like the students that came before you didn't know that they were supposed to show their workings, and yet they suck at it. <laughs> Like, you know, psych is not saying this is a big fat secret that you're not aware that you're supposed to show us how you got to the answer. This is not a big fat secret. Every single student before you has always known that they have to show their workings. And even though they know it, they're still not able to do it. What does that mean? What does that mean for you? It means you need to practice it to make sure that you're actually doing it. Not that you will do it on the day of the exam. No, that you are able to do it now and that you practice it and you make sure that you know what you're doing. And that you have that skill, that you're not missing stuff, that you're not overlooking stuff, that you're not oversummarizing, that you're whatever. We know that we have to do it. This is not a secret. And yet somehow it's not being done. What does that say to you? It says to you something's missing. What's missing? People aren't practicing doing it so they don't do it.
We do what we practice. We do what comes naturally to us based on what we've practiced. And if you didn't do it while you were studying, you're not going to do it on the day of the exam. Okay? Very dangerous. Now, second thing. Why and what have I done in terms of the ITC course that we created? Okay? So, students ask me, when they say to me, Yvonne, can you help me? Um, with you know with my exam prep and then I say to them okay this is this is what I've done it's very hard for students to reconcile what I've done and what you know how we've laid this out and why we've done it this way versus what they naturally want to do so there's this constant like conflict of yeah but Yvonne I feel like I need to go there and your stuff is like over there and I'm very uncomfortable okay so I want to show you how these two come together so let's, let's take a look at how at the 12 things that Psyche says is a problem and the course that we've created and why why we've done them the way that we have, all right? So let's look at this. Okay, so these are the 12, these are the 12 headings or the 12 things that Psyche says are concerns, okay? So these are, these are Psyche's concerns. So I'm gonna put them over there in the corner. This is what Psyche wants you to work on, all right? So when you ask me, Yvonne, like what have you done and how does it work? Uh, here's, here's what I've done. The first, the first component of the stuff that I'll go through with you or that my, my ITC prep, our, our ITC prep courses will go through with you is planning the case study. Okay, that's the first, that's the first skill okay and i want to be absolutely clear that everything that i do focuses on an underlying skill that you need now planning the case study is about saying when you have your reading time what do you do in that reading time how do you highlight make notes what do you highlight how do you work with the information that you're given in order to make sure that you understand the information that you're given and that you save time by making sure that you index it for use proper use later um, that you're able to identify and make sure you pick up all the details uh, that you need and you know very importantly that you're not continually rereading the case study because a lot of times we we kind of you know we read during the reading time and then you ask the question and then you have to go back and reread right so it's it's about developing the skill and a very specific methodology of how to plan a case study and you can see that that is going to span all subjects right so that's not topic specific that's not subject specific the question is can you save time by planning the case study properly how do you plan the case study properly to make sure that you save time that you're able to uh, apply your knowledge, you understand the relevant stuff, and you know what it is that you're doing. Okay, so that you're not redoing stuff, you understand what it is. How do you plan the case study? Okay, now in terms of our in terms of our 12 issues, this is um, this is something that's going to help with your time management. It's going to help with your application because you're planning and you're assessing what you're going to use the information for. And it's definitely going to help you with um, irrelevancy because you're making sure that you, you identify what the information in the case study actually is and how it works, as well as your recommendations because you can separate it. You make sure that you know that you're actually dealing with the appropriate stuff. Okay. Not to mention, you know, it definitely helps with your exam technique, like no question, because your ability to use the right stuff, get marks for what's actually there, et cetera, et cetera, very, very valuable. Okay, so that's the first one. Two, I call this the RTFQ, okay, and this is something that we've been hearing from lecturers like since time began. So the question is, why are you reading the question wrong if you don't intend to? So the problem that we have here. The problem that I have here with students is that you've been reading the same way since like you began to read. So what are you doing wrong? Like there's something that's going wrong. So this is a methodology to make sure that you read and interpret the question correctly. Okay, because this is where the problem lies, is that you're reading, but 
something is going wrong between you reading the question and interpreting what they want. Now, I generally find students lose like 10 to 15, maybe even 20% of their marks by misreading the question, answering the wrong thing, not realizing or like forgetting that the question wanted three things and you only answered one. Uh, you know, how many times have you come back later after you've done a test or an exam or something and you're like, but that's not even what the question wanted. Like, where did I get that from? Why did I do that, right? So we need a methodology to make sure that we're reading and interpreting the stuff properly. What is that gonna help us with? Okay, definitely gonna help you with application because you're making sure that you're applying, you know what you're doing. Like, I'm applying the right stuff to the right knowledge. Like, I understand what knowledge I need and I know what I'm gonna do with that knowledge because I have interpreted the question appropriately. Definitely helps with time management because you're making sure that you understand what's required of you up front instead of having to continuously come back and go, am I doing the right thing? Am I going through the right thing? Definitely irrelevancy. A large portion of the reason that students give irrelevant answers is because you didn't interpret the question correctly and you kind of read a keyword in the question. You were like, oh, okay, uh, risk. Okay, let me do everything relating to risk without realizing that they were more specific or interpreting exactly what it was that they wanted. Definitely interpretations and um, recommendations because a large, again, a large part of the problem, as you can see, like people are giving the wrong stuff. So we're not really able to commit to what we're supposed to be given. We're not answering the question. We're not giving you recommendations. We're kind of giving you something else. Um, an exam technique, again, very important in terms of you know, actually getting marks for the stuff that you can and, and making sure that, you know, where the easy marks are from the question you're getting instead of, you know, instead of avoiding them and spending time on the difficult stuff. The third skill is what I call the basic mark conversion. And this is really, really important because this is um, where we talk about, well, this is where, this is where I talk about, can you get marks for the stuff you know. So if you know 40% of your stuff, can you get 40% of the marks? In most cases, students are trying to get comfortable with 80% of their technical work in order to get 50% of the marks, which is very clearly, there's a problem there, right? If you know 40% of your work, you should be able to get 40% of the marks. So the question is, if you have basic knowledge, are you able to convert that knowledge into marks? And the answer for most of my students is no, we're not. Why? Well, there's a bunch of reasons for this. Mostly we just, we don't practice that. One of the reasons for this is that we spend too much time on the complicated stuff, which you'll see Psych has mentioned underneath time management, okay? So when we see something that's difficult or more complicated, we spend too much time in the exam on that um, because we kind of don't know how not to and we haven't practiced the skill of saying, if this is what I know, I must get marks for that. And before, before I run off and go and study more theory, let me make sure that I'm able to collect marks for the stuff that I have, right? This is kind of like saying, you know, if you're not able to use... Uh, if you're not able to spend the money that I give you wisely, then I'm not going to give you any more money. <laughs> you know? If you can't do something productive with the money that I do give you, like, I shouldn't be giving you any more money. If you can't get marks for the stuff that you already know, even if that's only 40%, then why are you collecting more knowledge? Because you clearly can't convert that into knowledge. If you need to know 80% of the work just to get scrape 50% of the marks, something is wrong. Okay, so basic mark conversion ratio is part of this is to help you with your workings. Do you understand why you're not converting those marks? Very, very important. Okay, one of the reasons or a lot of the reasons we're not converting our basic marks is, is practical stuff, is practice. I didn't show my workings. I'm not communicating stuff properly. My time management is bad. I'm spending too much time on stuff that you know, uh, that I actually don't really know. And so I'm not getting the basic marks. Perhaps it is my layout and presentation. Where are my easy marks going? Why am I not getting those marks? Is it because I'm spending time on irrelevant stuff and I don't actually know what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I not drilling down on the stuff that I'm supposed to be? Like, I did know the stuff, but I didn't know that I needed to use it in that much detail here. So, you know, they've allocated... 10 marks for this particular concept, but I summarized that whole concept into like two marks because I didn't know the level of detail that you wanted. 
yes, I did know it, but I didn't give it to you in the right form. I didn't give the recommendation. I kind of just did the calculation and left it. And then definitely exam technique. Like, where's my exam technique going? Um, the equal attention, not so much. Um, so where are you losing the marks? Like, What is getting in the way of you converting whatever knowledge you do have into marks? And I need you to get that skill going before you collect more knowledge, okay? If you've got knowledge in your head and you're not able to get marks for it, then we have a problem. And that problem is not knowledge because you have knowledge. If you're looking at a case study and you're looking at a solution and you go, yeah, yeah, I kind of, you know, I kind of know that, um, but I didn't get marks for that. That is not a knowledge issue, right? That is not a knowledge issue. You can't know it more than you already know it. Number four is gathering marks, okay? This is, uh, this is like the skill or the strategy, if you will, of keeping separated um, and shifting gears between the problem solving, like the technical problem that you're working with and the strategy. And this is, this is really difficult for us to do because once you get into the exam, you become like a technicist, right? So you, you focus on the technical stuff like a technicist. So you go, okay, here's a tax problem that I need to solve. And as you slip into the question, you become like a tax expert. If I was a tax expert, this is what I would do. And this is what I should be doing as a tax expert. But the problem that you face there is that you're writing an exam. And that exam is like a game which says, can you get 50% of the marks in a limited amount of time with an unseen question with limited knowledge? Okay, that is a game. There are, you know, there are rules. It's a strategy. So you need to continually be shifting gear between saying, I'm here to solve this problem and to answer this question, you know, relating to tax, but I'm not a tax expert here. I need to be a strategist. So I need to shift gears between going, that is the problem that I need to solve, but hold on, how can I get the easy marks? Um, am I still paying attention to the fact that my objective here is to gather marks, not be a tax expert? Okay, my objective here is to, to make sure that I get 50% of the marks and not spend more than the allocated time on this. That's a gear shift, right? That's a strategy shift. That's a strategic shift in thinking between uh, I'm in here to be an auditing expert and if I was the best auditor on earth, this is how I would solve this problem versus backing off and going, I'm not actually an auditing expert here. My goal here is to gather marks. So gathering marks is about a skill and a strategic thing shift in thinking between this is the problem I have to solve and if I was an expert I'd be able to do it versus where's the easy marks where can I get marks what do I need to do um, to actually meet my objective okay so that is obviously going to help you with your time management absolutely uh, your workings in terms of understanding what it is that I need to do to, to, to get those marks your presentation your layout and presentation absolutely irrelevancy why and what am I doing that I'm giving you stuff that I'm not supposed to that's not going to be getting questioned it will help you with your drilling down because you start to work on understanding where you should and shouldn't be drilling down and definitely going to help you with your with your exam technique so that's your gathering marks the next one is your communication skills your your basic communication skills um, for your discussion question. Now, more and more, we're seeing, you know, discussion questions are like everything, okay? They're everywhere, whether it's just a pure discussion or it's a calculate and explain where you got it from, calculate and recommend, or, you know, disclose, or whatever the case is, show me the steps in the calculation, how did you get there? There are way, like, there are too many discussion questions to ignore. Like you have to be able to do discussion questions in order to pass. And you can see, um, so this particular is the, the beginning of the discussion. This is like a very specific skill to help you. How do I communicate my knowledge? How do I apply my knowledge? How do I communicate what I know? How do I do this in a way that I still have time to do this? Um, how do I make sure that I'm not giving you irrelevant stuff or, or purely knowledge dumping? How do I make sure that I drill down into the right level of detail? Obviously, and your recommendations and interpretations are everything um, in terms of your in terms of your um, your communication. Like, how do I actually communicate the stuff that I huge issue? This is combined. 
Um, this is a nice lead in into six, which is probably the most important one that students structure that struggle with is the structure and the planning of your answer. And this is like hugely important and starts combining a little bit of, of number two and four and, and definitely five. It's like, how do you structure your answer? So you have a 15, 20 mark question. How do you structure that? How do you decide uh, you know, what they need from me, the level of detail I need to go? Like, how do you do your discussion questions? Most students are like, okay, I'll read the question. I'm going to jump to the answer as fast as possible and start writing down everything I know. But that means if you start off on the wrong track, you're on the wrong track. You don't know the level of detail you need to go into. And in a lot of cases, you're like, I don't know 20 things about this topic. I only know five. How do we help you trigger more marks? How do we help you get to better discussion questions, get to that structure, the need, the level of detail and the mark allocation, right? So number six is going to help you with your application. Um, it's going to help you with your definitely your time management um, your presentation, uh, your layout and presentation, definitely making sure you deal with the relevant stuff for the question, most absolutely making sure you drill down into the relevant stuff that you need, the recommendations and interpretations, um, and absolutely your exam technique as well. Uh, so this is like, you know, like how do I actually structure my questions? Like how do I actually think about, you know, they've asked me a 20 mark question, I can think of three things. What do I do now? So, you know, number six is absolutely crucial and so helpful because, um, you know, so many students struggle so much with, like, discussion questions. Uh, you know, how do I lay it out? What do I do? Where do I start? What do I think of? How do I trigger more marks? What am I supposed to remember? Is it just a theory? How do I apply it? How do I lay it out? How do I communicate it? So number six is probably the most important skill, which you're going to need, uh, definitely need one, two, um, and five, four, at the very least. Number seven, um, call this for, like, I kind of try and name and label the stuff that I do to make it easier to discuss. This, like, this one, I still need to come up with a better name. It's like your direct, your indirect, and your implied. Now, this is, um, this is like, this is what I call a marking tool. So uh, very much the same as your basic mark conversion ratio is a marking tool. And the intention here is to say, once you've done a question and you go back, can you identify how much of that solution was given straight from the case study, um, was kind of indirect, which is like you needed to use the information from the case study and that should have triggered this theory and this application versus like implied stuff as well, you needed to know that and you needed to know that in order to know that. And then once you know that, you can put it all together. And for me, this is really important because students have a tendency to get stuck on the implied stuff, which is like, uh, you know, you needed to be able to know that and that's integrate that and blah, blah, blah. and then once you knew that, then like, you know, then, then you'd be able to do that, which is kind of like, oh, well, I'm never going to get there. But can we identify whether or not you're able to pick up stuff directly from the case study that's relevant um, and the stuff that if I picked up that from the case study, this is what I have to do with it, okay? So this I find is, is very important as a marking tool for you to understand for the questions you're doing in marking, are you able to identify the relevant information from the case study and directly use that to get marks that are there and indirectly go, if I saw that, I was supposed to think of this. The implied stuff is a bit like higher grade, and you'll generally find the implied stuff is like 20% of the mark. So we work on the implied stuff after we work on the direct and the indirect. So this is a very valuable skill to make sure that you're applying your stuff properly, um, that you're communicating your stuff properly, okay, your direct and your indirect, that you're managing your time properly, especially that you're not spending your time focusing on the implied stuff when you didn't, you know, when you haven't just got the basic direct marks. So um, a lot of this is about, you know, what we kind of generically refer to as exam technique in, in terms of saying, um, you know, how do I use my knowledge in the best way within the time given the exam? Like, what should I be focusing on and how? So exam technique is like a massively broad category of stuff. 
um, that involves a whole bunch of skills ranging from, you know, sifting out relevant from irrelevant, uh, you know, getting the marks that you can up front, figuring out how to get basic marks for layout and using the information in the case study and your open book. So there's like this, you know, exam technique is a massively broad category. And this is not about study hacks of like, you know, um, how to get, uh, you know, how to get 10 easy marks. That's not the point. But the tragic thing for me is that as students, you know, we're not really taught and we don't, we don't actually really get, and we don't spend enough time focusing on, um, you know, how do I make sure that I'm able to use the knowledge that I have? Because you do have knowledge, and every time you look at a solution, you're like, yeah, yeah, I kind of know that, but you're not able to use it. And you can see, you know, everything here, you know, that 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 psych is talking about is about using your knowledge, like application of the knowledge they're not saying you don't know your stuff they're saying you can't apply it enough to pass and you can also see they're not being ridiculous they're not saying you should like you know th these are the they're not saying these are the types of things that people should focus on after you know everything so when you're ready to pass with your knowledge then then they're saying guys you can use this stuff to convert a low mark into a pass they said that like there it is you know beginning page 10 11 that's what they said so if this can convert your low mark into a pass, like that's what you're looking for right now, right? Okay, so number seven. Number eight is, um, again, a tool that I used to help students assess and improve their communication, their application, and their knowledge, okay? And um, so this is like a, a set of stuff that I, that I give you like a set of questions um, to help you assess for yourself how do I, like is my communication okay, will it get me marks, and um, how can I improve it? And these are skills that we're not taught, okay? So we're not taught how to assess our own communication, go how can we improve this, like what do we need to do? And what I've done is I've created a set of questions that you can answer. So for this particular question that you've done, I've given like, for any question you do, I give you a you know, there's a set of questions and I go, where did you spend your time? What did you do here? How was this? How did that go? Which you can answer based on your experience of how that question went. And then I kind of diagnose it and go, if you're struggling with that, that's your problem. If you're struggling with that, that's your problem. And then, you know, those problems are, um, lead you then back to one of these particular skills and go, okay, so if you said this happened in the question and you struggled with that, then your issue is communication. So let's go and fix that, you know, your, your basic discussion points. If you said you struggled with that, then your issue is structuring. So let's go and fix that. So this is the ability for you to assess and improve your own stuff. Okay. So for students who are currently on this course, currently going through it, I know that the temptation is to not do this. And a lot, you know, you guys are like doing, you know, one of these a week, uh, you know, like one every two weeks and you're going back to theory. But like, I want you to see how everything here is going to improve every little piece of theory you have. Okay. And as you're doing questions, you are revising the theory. You are revising the knowledge. You do the question, you know, you do the tax question and we're working through these, but at the same time, you're picking up your tax knowledge. So it's not as though you're not doing the knowledge, but what we're saying is like, guys, you need to be able to use the stuff properly. So you can see what we've done and you know, what I'm focusing on here is the stuff that Psych is going, guys, you know, you're, you're struggling with this stuff. Your journal entries that, you know, these are like the only things you know, that we haven't really directly done is journal entries, um, navigating your open book, which, you know, I, I really think we need to address. And, and for students in CTA, I, you know, I, I help them do that. You know, can you use those books and do you understand how they're structured to get value out of them, even if you haven't spent loads of time tagging and highlighting the stuff? And the equal attention is basically just around saying, like, if you're uncomfortable with your stuff and you don't have the skill to deal with it, you're going to focus on what you're you know, you're going to focus on the only thing that you're comfortable with to the exclusion of all else. So whether you do, you know, whether you do a course, you know, of mine or you do, you know, you do your own studying, whatever board course you're doing, whatever you're doing, these are the skills that you need to be working on. 
Okay, I give you very specific methodologies so that you can get to these as fast as possible. Um, in the course that I designed with Tabaldi, each one of these has an ITC question that we've used to say, okay, now you do this. You know, we go through the planning, the case study, and the, the, the read the question, and we go, here's the methodology, now you do it and submit it to us and we'll tell you how it's going, um, so that you can then move on to the next one, right? So if you're able to do these, the, you know, the, the beautiful thing about the course we've developed is it means that you actually are submitting this to a lecturer, to someone else to look at and go, okay, that's great, now move on. You know, you actually are applying, so you're practicing the skill on an ITC question, which means you're doing the theory anyway, like you're doing technical theory anyway, um, and at each point, you're actually doing a question and you're working on that particular skill. So I'm giving you step-by-step -step instructions. Here's how to plan the case study. Here's the methodology you should use. Now go do it yourself do a question and submit it. Once you've got these eight done, you can imagine the value of then doing some exams and then doing questions on your own when you're able to communicate properly, you're structuring your questions, you, you know you're applying stuff properly, using relevant stuff, you're focusing on bad, you know, you're focusing on gathering marks as opposed to getting lost in the detail, you know, you're able to convert anything you know into marks. And that means, you know, as you gather another 5% of theory, you're able straight away to turn it into marks, okay? So whatever you're doing, I want you to understand whatever board course you're doing, focus on the skills, focus on the skills. And again, like, yes, this is what, this is what I say based on, you know, a decade of working with students and understanding what you struggle with from undergrad to postgrad to ITC and beyond um, and, and APC, this is the stuff that's going to get in your way. And again, you don't trust me, trust Psycho. Okay? You don't trust me, trust Psycho. Please, guys, I know that you're scared. I know that this stuff is uncomfortable. I, you know, like, but this is, you know, this is, this is getting behind the wheel of a car. You, you, you're spending an enormous amount of time learning how to drive a car, but you're not getting behind the wheel of a car, and it sucks. And, you know, you may drive into something, but let's, you know, I'd rather you drive into, like, a little wall, you know, nice and peacefully, you know, in a parking lot where it's nice and quiet, than, you know, getting out on the highway <laughs> kind of thing. Like, it's going to happen. You're going to bump something. Something's going to go wrong. But that doesn't mean that you need to go back to the safety zone of theory. It means that you need to work on the underlying skill. You take a look at these. Every single one of these skills is going to improve every single one of your topics. Every one of your subjects, every single one of your topics is going to improve if you improve your basic underlying skills. And again, I'm going to come back to that's what Psyche says. Okay, so whether or not you want to do a course of mine, whether or not you want to do this on your own, these are the types of things that you need to be focusing on in order to pass ITC. Can it still be done? by you know by this itc yes it can you're gonna to have to work on it and you're gonna to have to shift those skills you have to make sure that you focus on them and don't fall back into the trap of theory if you're studying theory you're not studying because you can't use it you can't use it if you can use it you've got it if you can't use it you may as well lose it okay so anything that you're focusing on that's not based on can i get marks for this thing Forget about it. Do a question and then go and do theory. Close the theory gaps after you've done the question, not before. Guys, I know it's uncomfortable. I know it's horrible. I know it's intense. I know, like, you know. But after all these years, guys, let's make that difference. Let's focus on the right thing. Let's do the right thing.